read reports before commenting on them, we might be in a better situation. My hope is that every member of council seriously reads the report with an objective eye and comes to their own conclusion. They may agree with us, they may disagree with us, but read the report first and, and look at what the report is saying before you come to a conclusion. I think we'll make better decisions that way. My pleasure. Hi, Professor. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Um, well, it's 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 a bit of speculation. It depends a bit on how much the thing is actually going to cost. It depends on uh, on the tax base. But yes, I mean, if the citizens of Toronto were willing to increase taxes, that would generate a revenue stream upon which you could build you could you could build transit. But that even if that's the case and if people are willing to raise taxes, which so far nobody, particularly the mayor, has said they were ready to do, um, the question is how to spend that money. If it, even if we have money, the question is how do we spend it wisely? And what our report is saying, uh, if one actually reads it, is that if you look at all the criteria, uh, in this instance, the LRT is the better investment on, on a cost-effectiveness basis. And we're going to have to build billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of transit in the city if we're going to catch up. So regardless of how we finance transit, this question still remains, what is the most cost-effective way of using that money? And in our report, we're arguing that in this case, the Shepherd Subway is not a good investment from that point of view, even if we have the money. There's better ways of spending that money. Uh, so I think the argument from some of the mayor's opponents is that it may not be a great investment for this year, it may not be a great investment for next year, but over the long term, uh, it, it all balances out and, and some ways are better. Well, that's that's an assertion that's being made. It's based on a, a large number of assumptions. When one can tweak those numbers any which way, the LRT is also a long-term investment. They're, they're, the, the opponents of the LRT keep you know, implying that this is some sort of toy train that's going to fall apart in a few years. This, we are looking at long-term investment. Whatever we build is going to be there well beyond your life, let alone my life. Um, and and uh, But they are both city-building um, options. Both will help us build cities. They'll build the city in a somewhat different way. One of the things we emphasize in the report is the LRT provides the opportunity to build along all of Shepherd Avenue. And, and, and so you have, it'll be a different sort of development than if you're building at just a couple of nodes. But to be able to intensify and develop and improve connectivity right across uh, northern Scarborough out, out into the east, we think is, is, is a long-term city building uh, opportunity that we want to take advantage of. Further, it provides a spine upon which we can now start hanging and crew north-south uh, transit that will help us to further build and intensify the network and build Scarborough. So, so both of these are city building. I think the decision between the two, in fact, doesn't hinge on city building because they both will help us build cities. So in making a decision, you have to see what differentiates the two. Where, where, can, where, where are both good and where are the pros and cons? And if, can you guarantee that no lanes of traffic will be taken on the well, th th yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's clear. I mean, uh, you, you have all this width there, and, and the TTC and Metrolinx have made that very clear. There's no, you know, there's no loss of traffic. So again, this is this is a false argument. People are, are being scared to think, uh, scared into thinking that they're going to lose lanes of traffic. That simply is false. There's been a lot of false information going out on this from all sides. Uh, what this report is trying to do is get the facts of it. Uh, one thing that jumped out at me as well is that the line you're recommending doesn't go to the Scarborough Town Center, it goes across the top. And that's something that was identified for years by city planning as um, connecting the Scarborough Town Center to the the west. So why aren't you recommending that? Well, this is an issue. This is something we actually were very concerned about in the panel because that, that, and that and, you know, one of the thing, reasons this is such a difficult decision is they're not apples to apples. They, not only are they different technologies, but they go different places. The root alignments, other than the first little section, is quite different. So again, they're they're doing different things and city, building cities in different ways. But what's lost in this conversation is, first of all, Scarborough town, uh, City Center is connected to the downtown via the Scarborough Rapid Transit, which is slated in all of this, and the reason we haven't been talking about is slated for major upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, so the connection of the Scarborough City Center to the downtown, which is a much more 
more important, if you actually look at the travel markets, is a much more important connection to central Scarborough than connecting to North York City Center. So that improving that downtown connection is the single best thing you can do for the city center. Second of all, if we build the LRT line, when that SRT is upgraded, it will be extended to connect up to Shepherd Avenue. So at least the eastern half of, uh, of northern Scarborough will have now then a direct connection to Scarborough City Center. And I think, although this wasn't part of our report, I think, again, the key, what we do talk in the report is building a network in Scarborough. And so SRT... SRT combined with Shepherd, with the Shepherd LRT combined with other things that aren't even on the books yet, mm -hmm. will build a network centered on that city center that will help grow it. So, I, so again, we don't address that directly, uh, but my hope, my belief, if you will, in city building is that there's other ways of building the city, accomplishing the goals of the city center. One other thing that jumped out at me as well is that um, the line you recommended stops just a little short of the Toronto Zoo. Why not go all the way? Or is that not an important fact? Well, I think, I, I think, you know, my view of this is we have to get past this decision and we have to get moving. Once we break the logjam and make this decision, I, I, again, in our report we start talking about comprehensive transit planning. I think we can revisit a bunch of these options, particularly some of the details. There's always ways to improve things. I have, we haven't looked at that. You, again, you have to look at the demand path. I mean, I think a, a direct connection to the zoo would be a nice thing, mm -hmm. but you know, presumably wherever it ends, well, then you run, you run a, night, a good, frequent shuttle bus to the zoo if that's what you have to do. Uh, it, the economic, we haven't looked at that, but the economics, of, you know, that final push may be at least in the short run beyond. On, on the decision. There's nothing to say if you go this far in the future, if the economics are there and the demand is there, push it all the way. But 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 maybe you build it starting with a bus connection. Again, that's not something we've looked at in detail. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks very much. Thanks.